With so much software and so many services available in the short-term rental industry these days, it's increasingly difficult to keep up to date with what's on the market and to determine whether it's a maybe or a must-have for you and your business. So meet one provider each week in a short interview, learning what they do and what they offer. So if you have around 20 minutes to spare, it could prove to be a very good investment to stick around. So let's see who and what is out there, one by one, with me, Deborah Larby, also known as the Guest Inspector. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Texplained with the Guest Inspector. Well, it's been a year since I last interviewed today's guest, and I believe in that year they've added a good 20-odd new features, a shining example of software aggregation. Today's company's service starts from the guest inquiry right through to well past checkout and uses not only custom automation, but AI automation as well. It's so customizable that I think the name of the business should actually be if then connect. But for now, it's called Enzo Connect. And today I'm chatting with one of its founders, Francois Guello. Hello, Francois. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me again on the uh, on the show. Really excited to share more about the updates. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for your time. And yes, it's going to be a very in-depth interview this time. I think there is a lot to cover, but we're going to start off the usual way. Francois, can you tell me in one sentence, what does Enzo Connect do? Yeah. So simply put, we're like the Zapier of hospitality. We essentially help you connect all your different tech stacks and digitize and monetize the guest experience. Mm-hmm. That would be my one sentence. <laughs> okay, that's all right. So now as a property manager, I want to use Enzo Connect. First of all, what do I what do I do to come on board? What do I see? Do I have a dashboard? And then we'll start going through what are the things that you offer me? 100%. So um, the first thing is you need a property management system. So we integrate with different systems currently to date. It's March 29th of 2023. I say this now because I know that in a few months it's going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, we're integrated to PMSs like Guesty, Hostaway, Logify, LMPM, Booking Sync, Muse, Track, uh, I mean, the list keeps growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and effectively, once you've connected your property management system, we will synchronize and two-way sync all of the information uh, to give you, let's say, three different verticals, a messaging piece, a boarding pass, and a CRM, all tied together with your property management system, but we handle the guest experience. Right. So, okay. so let's start. Okay, so I, I've signed up. Uh, sorry, yeah, I've signed up with you. I've connected through my PMS. Let's say an inquiry comes through. What, what's the process? What happens? Yeah, so it depends on the property management system. Some don't support inquiries. Some do support inquiries. So there are always caveats. But assuming they do, mm-hmm. uh, we'll two-way sync the messaging that's coming from the PMS and allow you to create different types of workflows and automations for uh, that inquiry stage. So one of my favorite ones is actually called the Inquiry Converter. And it's really simple. All it is is a little toggle that says, if the guest books or replies after a specific time that I decide, don't message them back. Now, what does this mean? This means the guest asks you a question saying, hey, is the hot tub heated this winter? And you respond saying, yes, the hot tub is heated. Then you kind of just leave it at that because you have a hundred other guests that you need to handle. What if you could create a little automation to follow up with the guest, uh, but cancel that follow up because you don't want to sound unprofessional if they end up booking. Mm. Um, so cancel it if they end up booking or mm-hmm. messaging you back with another question. And what this does is we've calculated an increase in conversion of inquiry to booking by 18% by just following up. I mean, it's sales 101. Yeah. That's a, an example of one of the automations. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that is one of the things that even I'm discovering with my uh, my various uh, businesses, following up. You've answered a question and things like that. And, uh, you know, they get lost in the email list. So, yeah, yeah. following up uh, after that first question. That's great. And AI takes over that, right? 100%. So on the AI side, I'm just plugging in my computer because here I am out of battery. <laughs> shut down. There we go. Um, so on the AI side, I mean, we have some exciting developments coming out in the next couple of months, obviously, with all the discussions around chat GPT. Um, we were using the same model as the transformer model for quite some time. And there's different verticals that we use it for. Uh, so we use it for sentiment analysis so that you can proactively know if a guest is unhappy. And that's a fairly simple thing to look at. 
Uh, then you can start prioritizing your guests by the ones that are checking in and unhappy. Mm -hmm. uh, those are usually the ones that are most likely to give you a bad review if you don't handle whatever needs to get handled. Um, we do predictive responses, which is effectively just categorizing your saved replies and predicting what is the best one so that you don't have to go dig into a list of a thousand saved messages. And then it's really about how you can use all of the data that we collect from your guests, the sentiment, uh, the the I mean, it could be anything. It could be the business reason, uh, sorry, the travel reason, et cetera, to create workflows. Mm -hmm. So again, one of my favorite automations that we see being used all the time is on checkout. If the sentiment is positive or very positive, then remind them to leave a review. If not, don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, fairly yeah. simple, but you need to have that data to, in order to automate those different tasks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's say then a booking confirmation comes through so then uh, 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 automatically enzo connect takes over and the boarding pass now takes over so with the booking confirmation what are the steps that start happening automatically uh, or that uh, sorry that i might have programmed or uh customized for the flow that i want what would normally happen Exactly. So the main thing that we discovered, I would say, well, not discovered, but that we really wanted to insist on is that every property is different. Every guest is different. Every owner is different. And every property management business is different. So we built in January of this year, we launched Guest Journey Editor. Uh, and what it is, is basically works through that entire flow from the booking confirmation all the way to the end and allows you to configure the different steps of the guest journey. <clears throat> so what we're going to start off with is sending your boarding pass. Your boarding pass is a web app. There's no application to download. It's just a link that we send to guests. But instead of sending five, six, seven different links for the different steps of your guest journey, it is one link that embeds all of the other links that you might be using. So your smart locks, your verification partners, your guidebooks, uh, your upsells, your fees, your messaging, so many different verticals. Um, and we're going to send a booking confirmation message with a link, short little message that, that just says, in order to get verified for your booking, uh, please confirm everything through the boarding pass. And they click on the boarding pass, and it's the first time you can educate your guests on what is this boarding pass. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the first step. Do you want me to kind of dive into yeah, what comes next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can configure the messaging. You can start creating rules to say, you know, I want to send the boarding pass. If it's a last-minute reservation, I want to send it right away. If it's a booking... Uh, that's confirmed six months ahead. I want to send it within three months. You can you can decide and permutate all the different rules based on your own conditions. And again, mm -hmm. categorize this by property, by group of properties. For all of my properties, uh, you can edit these settings. Mm -hmm. And so the first step as a guest, and to be fair, this is how we developed the boarding pass a year ago. And it's so fantastic to see how it's evolved. When we started the boarding pass, it was to collect guest data. And then it evolved into what it is today. And so the first step is still collect guest data and it's going to fuel everything that comes in next. So we're going to ask them questions like, what's your name, your email, your real email, not your at Airbnb email, mm -hmm. uh, your phone number, your company, your travel reason, any question that you think might be relevant for their stay. Then they're going to go through the verification where you can choose one of our awesome partners, Autohost, Superhog, Party. Uh, where you can effectively embed and white label that process within your boarding pass. And then they get access to the main boarding pass. The main boarding pass has their a big button that says check-in, has upsells, has guidebooks, and it is all locked to follow the rules that you want. So maybe you want a safety deposit first before they can access that check-in button. Or maybe it's 3 p.m., check-ins at 4, they showed up a bit early, they hit that check-in button, it says... Do you want to purchase an early check-in? And that's free money for you. Uh, we do charge like 2% to the guest, but it's so mm -hmm. minimal uh, considering the amount of money that operators can make on just yeah. basic upsells. Yeah. Uh, and then once they go through, once they're approved to go through the check-in instructions, it is a step-by-step, picture-by-picture check-in instruction. Uh, I like to say, if you don't know how to check-in after the boarding pass, just stay home um, <laughs> because it's really a Pictionary. Uh, for I, I have had one guest send us a message on our website saying they unfortunately couldn't access the boarding pass. And when we asked why, uh, the lady said, well, unfortunately, she didn't have a phone. So, I mean, in those oh. cases, that's fair. Um, yeah. You know, the digital experience doesn't necessarily work for people who aren't digital yet. But mm. um, I think we're, we're getting past that phase uh, in terms of, you know, people not necessarily having phones. Mm. 
And then once they've gone through their check-in, now we do connect smart locks. We connect dozens of smart locks. Yale, August, Schlage, Nuki, Eagle Home, the list goes, Salto, the list goes on. And then they get access again to the boarding pass where you can have guidebooks, you can have so much information, and it's going to be the same process for your check-in instructions. Hmm. Can I That's stop you main... just for one second? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. So no, no. If, the, if, if there are uh, times where you can unlock certain information, right, they've paid the security deposit, or I don't want to give them the smart lock uh, number uh, uh, code until 9 a.m. on that morning. Is there a way that the the web link notifies the guest to say, hey, by the way, there's the next step for your process. Go in there now and pay a security deposit or your lock is there now. How does the guest know to, oh, it's there's new information well, that, there? Yeah. So great, great question. At every step, when we broke down the guest journey, other than configuring your boarding pass throughout that guest journey, we also have messages for each step of the guest journey that can be configured based on the rules that you want. Yeah. So you can say things like when a guest purchases an early check-in, send them X, Y, and Z message. When a guest has paid their safety deposit, or if a guest tried to pay their safety deposit, but it didn't go through because of a credit card and information issue, send them a reminder that it didn't go through. You can permutate all of these different automations and our team will help you actually build the best in class guest experience for your business. I mean, we've mm -hmm. seen this on auto hotels, glamping sites, traditional vacation rental homes, old castles, condo hotels, like really anything. So mm -hmm. we've kind of seen what works, what doesn't work. For example, you know, if it's Airbnb, you probably don't want to add a bunch of fees. Uh, what's it called? Collect all the IDs, get the agreement signed. If you put too many steps at the verification stages, they get kind of burdened by mm -hmm. it because they've already done this on Airbnb. But mm -hmm. if it's booking up, um, and in the, you're in the U.S., you best have those settings and you best have auto host because yeah. we're also chargebacks and such. So yeah, really and, about and, and, these work. And when you when you want to notify the guest, is that possible to be done through email and text and WhatsApp? I mean, can you choose how you get in touch with the guest? How they how the guest is notified? Absolutely. So you can do email, WhatsApp, SMS, Airbnb. You can also do web hooks. Now, web hooks may sound a bit crazy, but basically, this is way of sharing information without having to do a whole API integration. Mm -hmm. So if you have a system where you're like, oh, I really wish Enzo Connect could let my other system know that X, Y, and Z was done, you can actually create an automation to say when X, Y, and Z was done, send that information to whatever system. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. I've got a property manager in Canada who has a building that requires them to sign an agreement in a very specific format. So he can only do this in DocuSign. He went to every provider out there and really, you can only do this in DocuSign. Oops, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the only way he was able to do this was by sending a webhook to DocuSign. What is going on? My apologies. Um, no problem. It was send a webhook to uh, DocuSign to pre-fill all that information so that he can still have that workflow. So we can do this as a connection to, to DocuSign. Uh, we've used this conditional logic for so many different permutations. But the short answer, um, sorry for going on a tangent, is yes, uh -huh. you can send through any channel uh, that makes sense for you. That's yeah. great. We're all yeah. great, great, great. Okay, I, I think I, I stopped you in your tracks before. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, the yeah. thing is, so there's the guest verification, then there's the security deposits, and there's a few choices with security deposits. Again, up to the property manager and up to the uh, the depending on the property and the owner exactly, uh, etc. Yeah, exactly. You can add conditions to everything. Yeah. You can even add conditions to your guidebooks, to your check-in steps. So for example, I've got an operator in Hamilton uh, here in Toronto nearby who wants to display the parking instructions, but only if the guest has paid the parking fee. So how would you do this before? Well, you would manually go in, check if they paid the parking fee, then send them the instructions for the parking. Or in the case where you didn't want to bother, you would send everyone the parking instructions, people would park, and then you'd have to go to them and say, actually, you can't park there because you didn't pay for the fee. So we add a condition to say, if they paid the parking fee, instead of having three steps for your check-in, you now have five steps with the check-in instructions for your parking. Mm -hmm. And you can do this on guidebooks. You can say, only offer this guidebook or show this information. You know, Maybe you want to show a guidebook for a business traveler that shows all the WeWorks and the remote working areas in the city. But you're not going to show this to a family of four that's traveling for a vacation. I mean, mm -hmm. unless the, the parents really need to get to work. But um, you, <laughs> you would just show this for the relevant audience. So it's really about segmentation, getting yeah. all that information from the guests, and then personalizing their journey. Uh, but 
by personalizing, we really mean personalizing. Yeah. Automation, sending a message automatically is not personalizing. Yeah. Tailoring it. Yeah. yeah. And, and that tailoring, I, I realize that the tailoring can start from the very beginning when you're getting all that information, the, the guest information, like the reason for your trip. So, you know, that's coming later on in the CRM. But uh, <laughs> yes, there's all that information that you can pull then and then use in that personalization. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. So that's why we started with this whole idea of collecting information about the guests. I mean, we've got really awesome examples of um, property managers using that information to personalize the experience. So if you have a pet, they'll collect the name of the pet so that they can greet you and the pet uh, when you're staying. And I know it sounds so trivial, but doing this at a high scale when you have 150 properties is next to impossible to manage unless you create a process. And yeah. you tell all your guest service team, make sure to ask if they have a pet and what's the name. Yeah, They're going to so many things to do it's the least of their concerns is knowing the name of the pet <laughs> and i bet you that'll get you an extra star in your review it'll be a six star out of five exactly. because they knew the dog's name <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> oh my so, god i mean you can get creative and then this this applies as well to other cells you know yeah. we talk a lot about early check-in late check-out mid-stay cleaning but um our connect approach is I think what has helped us grow uh, 10 or 15 in 2022 uh, in terms of revenue and in terms of listings, in terms of so many different things. So it, it it all has to do with our connect approach. We are not trying to replace a lot of the software that are out there. We connect with it. Mm. So if you're already using touch stay guidebooks, you can now actually connect your touch stay guidebooks to Enzo Connect. Mm -hmm. I don't know if touch that yet, but I do need to reach out to touch stay to let them know. Um, <laughs> upsells. We connect with Hostco. We connect with Mounts. If you wanted more inventory or you want more amenity selling uh, or you want Niagara Tours and Eiffel Tower, this, you can connect with Viator. We're not about building everything in the house and having it with the control mm. on all the functionalities and you replacing your entire tech stack. Mm. It's just about connecting what you have and mm. making it seamless to the guests yeah. while making it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all in the one place on that boarding pass. I think that's fantastic. Everything is there. Yeah. Um, oh, you touched on something and I've gone blank with it. Uh, it wasn't about upsells. Oh, it, it, for example, early check-in. So let's say the property hasn't been booked so that the mm -hmm. morning is open. It looks like the morning is open. Uh, if someone requests an early check-in, it's it, it can it I mean like do you have to it can be automated I imagine but do you can we set it so you know you can run it by me before we offer it? Absolutely, we have now, all again, these automations have an override, a manual override, if, if just in case. Okay, great. all of them. In fact, sometimes you'll go through the verification process and have a specific setting, but then this is actually my buddy from uh, Ottawa, and I know him, and we don't need to go through all the safety deposits, so we're going to add a little tag to the guest called VIP, and it's going to skip certain steps of the boarding pass. Oh, I thought it was going to be give him a hard time. <laughs> no, <laughs> if it's me, probably. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, no. If, if um, you can add these tags or these settings and we're now exposing them as simple actions because we see the same tags being used again and again. Yeah. Um, but effectively, when you want to skip certain steps, whether it's, you know, the verification steps or if you want to override some of these settings, absolutely, you can do that. Um, and you can add manual tags to say, you know, approve, manually approve verification, manually approve check-in, manually approve upsells. Okay. Uh, and we have mobile app. Take it on the go, hit accept, and you move on. Okay. Uh, get yep. Now, let's say I have um, returning guests. Do they have mm -hmm. to go through that uh, guest verification? Or can I say any returning guest can just bypass the guest verification? Have I still got the details stored somewhere? Absolutely. So we store all that information. In fact, in our messaging view, so we have a unified inbox to communicate with all these different automations. Um, you will see on the right-hand panel, all the existing reservation, as well as all past inquiries and reservations with notes, tags, bills, settings. If they purchased an early check-in three times before for their three different stays, mm -hmm. you probably want to offer another early check-in. If not, maybe offer it for free because they'll be even happier because yeah. uh, they always show up early, things like that. So we we centralize all of that guest data so you can have a view. Yeah. Um, and you can create these automations to say, if you wanted to, you don't have to. If the guest is already booked, skip the verification. I know this person, I trust them, no problem. Absolutely. Fantastic. So when, once the guest is in, so for example, uh, before they arrive, they've got the door lock, they're inside. As a property manager, I can be notified that they're inside, right? 
That's correct. Yep. Yeah, you'll get good. a notification. You get a notification via email, SMS, or our mobile app, and you can also yeah. create notifications for your team. So if they checked in, send an email to my cleaner mm -hmm. to let them know. I don't know why right. you send an email there, but great point. <laughs> and with the guidebook, it, it's everything. You know, you can add video, you can add photos, how the oven works, how the aircon works. This is the remote control. Da, 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 da. And with the upsells, okay, uh, let's say I want to rent a scooter or. Uh, things like that, or private chef services like yeah. that, I can put in there. Okay, what about? Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that you you you've connected up with something like Uber Eats. Now, one of the things yeah. when you're in a holiday rental is I don't know the address. I'll have to look at the booking confirmation again. If I was to book Uber Eats via the book or the boarding pass, will the address be in there? Uh, absolutely. And it's a one-click link. So Uber, Uber Eats, or any of the services were just about to announce, I think, this week, uh, a massive new connection to, I think, about 80 new systems. So you can do Turo, you can do Uber, you can do tomatoes.mx, which is Uber Eats for Tulum in Mexico only. Um, <laughs> why not? Um, we will pre-fill the address in there. So you're at the airport, you're on your boarding pass, you click the Uber, Orders an Uber, by the way, to to your vacation rental or property. Absolutely. And Perfect. I that. Perfect. The entire, the, the entire boarding pass. Now, this is we're probably we're the only ones who who do this. If I'm if I'm correct, is Apple Wallet compatible? I know. I was uh, about. It's on the bottom of my list, and oh sorry. my god. <laughs> Yes. I'll get to it then. I will get to it. <laughs> well, no, we can talk about it now. I think that's great. Yeah. I, I'm an Apple user and I like my boarding passes in there and having that sort of information in there would be very helpful. There's a reason it's called a boarding pass. It's just like a boarding pass for your flight, but it's a boarding pass for your home. Yeah. Um, strategically for us, this was a way to counter any offline issues. Yes, shows up. They don't have data. How do they know the address? What happens? Because it is a web app and it is a link. Uh, and while we don't see much of that being a problem in today's day and age, it was good to have a backup plan. And that's a way for you to travel and have the address, the Wi-Fi information, the basic information about the property on your Apple wallet, just like you would for your flight. Yep. Fantastic. Oh, I, I really like that. Yeah. The, the main thing I like is the fact that it took me a year to figure out how to delete things in the Apple wallet. Oh, no. Um, like, I swear, it took me so long to figure it out. So the cool thing is once they add it to their Apple Wallet, your brand is in that Apple Wallet forever, unless they know how to. Uh, <laughs> I know how to delete them. <laughs> That's great. So, yes, there's upsells and contactless checkout. So the guests will let you know when they're gone, when they've checked out. Exactly. So you can create late checkout options, all of those things. So we connect to smart locks uh, yeah. for the check-in. Uh, it's really cool because if it's a Wi-Fi enabled smart lock, you hit a button that says unlock and it goes and it unlocks the door or you can put it in a code, of course, if you wanted to back up codes like that. Yeah. When they go through the checkout instructions and they get to the last step and they hit I'm out, then you get a notification knowing that they are out and they can no longer access uh, the boarding pass and such. Uh, yeah. So it's a good way for you to confirm checkouts. In fact, yeah. we usually tend to tell people in your last step, Make sure to let them know that once they hit the I'm out button, it's game over. Yeah. Um, so it's a good way for, you know, getting efficient with your cleaning team as well, yeah. knowing exactly what the guest is about, things like that. Yeah. And so the boarding pass sort of self-destructs after that. <laughs> well, all the links are not null and void. Correct. All the, the, the boarding pass does self-destruct thereafter. <laughs> I mean, there's a, a quick little review piece to it. Uh, so you can put a star rating and a link to your direct booking website uh, with your branding and such. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it pretty much self-destructs. If they go back to the boarding pass, it, it would be back to the review piece with the yeah. the direct website. Yeah. Yeah. That's now, uh, in the intro, I said well beyond checkout. So uh, Enzo Connect is also like a CRM. So when we were talking about the guest uh, data, for example, I'm coming for a holiday, uh, sorry, a holiday, a birthday weekend. Yeah. So that sort of thing you can actually use that information down the line. Can you sort of give us some examples of how it'll work with Enzo Connect as a CRM? Yeah. So if you think about it, you've got the boarding pass that covers the entire journey from booking confirmation to checkout. You've got the messaging, which allows you to interact with your guests from inquiry to checkout. Now, if you combine the two together, it's basically a spreadsheet of all of that information that you collected, whether it's the sentiment, the travel reason, when they checked in, how much they spent, did they purchase upsells? 
every behavioral aspect of that stay gets fed into this gigantic database of your guests. Uh, and using the same workflow automations, now comes the time to create automations to reach out to them after their stay mm. and personalize it so that you're not reaching out to the one who couldn't check in or you're not reaching out to the one who was really angry because the faucet was leaking or whatever it might be. You're only reaching out to the happiest clients, the ones that traveled for business versus the ones that traveled for a family trip and really start personalizing things. They had the birthday example was perfect. You mm. collect the data Great. Now we know it's their birthday. Shoot them a little SMS to say happy birthday. We had a great time having you, you know, stay with us in the uh, XYZ day. Let's, you know, do this again. <laughs> mm. uh, book again with us directly. And we recommend using our SMS functionalities for those uh, post checkout automations because, you know, email campaigns work. I, I get sometimes email, you know, uh, newsletters and things like that where I'm like, oh, cool. And I'll check it out. But for the most part, you send me a text. I'll give you an example. There's one company called Here. I don't know if you've heard of them in the vacation rental space where you can like purchase an asset or almost a piece of a vacation rental. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, I don't even know them and I'm plugging them here shamelessly. But <laughs> they're, they're, they're just awesome. And they send me a text message every time there's a new property and what it's accomplished and things like that. And it's so much more enticing than if I had an email sequence of that information. Then my phone, a little blue dot, it pisses me off. So I open the link and then I, oh, that's cool. Mm. Uh, so it's the same with your guests, post-checkout reach-outs. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and I think texting is actually a very interesting way of communicating because it is sort of like people check texts. They do yeah. look at them. They open them. And uh, and they're easy to delete and they're not, you know, in your personal, you know, part of your phone or WhatsApp or whatever. But, um, yeah, anyway, I think it's yeah. very interesting. interesting. And the other thing is you're as a vacation rental manager, you have so much upside compared to hotels to, to message them again, because it's a much more personalized experience. Mm. Even if you're a professional property manager, they have to deal with a human and you as the property manager are the human uh, that was involved in their state, even if it's a digital state to a certain extent, whereas a hotel is a big brand and a lot of people involved and you don't really know who's who. Mm. So having that message to the guests, especially if it's personalized and tailored just for them, uh, will have a much bigger impact than your very fancy newsletter that, quite frankly, I'm not sure many guests end up reading. So, But TV, you know, some people have great success with their emails as well, and you can obviously send emails to them to connect. So, yeah, to okay. That. Yeah, <laughs> we have to move along because we're uh, time yeah, yeah, yeah. running. <laughs> um, okay, what is your, uh, in one sentence, what is your unique selling point? Maybe not one sentence, but what is your unique selling point? we solve the fragmentation in the hospitality space uh, for the guests. So we make the experience better. We make your, your, your team more efficient and we make your business more money uh, by virtually cre by creating a digital experience for your guests that is tailored for them. Mm -hmm. That's a sentence, but it should work. Yeah. Well, no, I was going <laughs> to say, why would I use your product? But you've answered it as well. You know, you've saved time <laughs> and you've created this absolutely personal uh, guest journey. That's great. Yeah. Now, yeah. uh, in terms of white labeling, everything is branded to the property manager, correct? That's correct. And we're also launching listing group branding because some people manage multiple brands. So you can have mm. multiple brands within Enzo Connect. That way, if one of your properties needs to be in brand A versus properties here need to be in brand B, you can do that too. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Now, who is your target audience? Do you have a sweet spot of number of properties or, or size company uh, to, to deal with? We, we don't actually have a limit on if you're small or big, but we target scaling property managers. So if you're looking to create a professional property management business, you want to grow that business, you want to grow your inventory, you want to grow your revenue, then that's the kind of audience that we, we target. Boutique hotels as well. Mm -hmm. um, very focused on the vacation rental market to the boutique space. Mm -hmm. and, and where is your target audience? This is a global oh, service, yes. correct? Yeah, we're in 240 languages on the boarding pass and in our message automations, uh, ranging from French, English, all the way to Breton, Catalan, um, <laughs> you know, other languages. So uh, we are global uh, and split across US, Canada, Mexico, France, Italy, Right. The list goes up. <laughs> you, you've got it covered. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The next big question, since you're offering so much, how much does it cost? 
How is the so, pricing structured? It's a great question. And we just launched our pricing publicly, uh, which I know a lot of companies don't like to do because I'm tired of negotiating. We have a price and mm -hmm. this is how much it costs. And it's not, you know, if you want a, a better deal because you're going to grow to a certain extent, by all means, reach out to our sales team. Mm -hmm. uh, so it ranges anywhere between five to $20 per month per room, depending on the number of uh, listings or rooms that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an onboarding fee, although we're slowly going to start getting rid of that over time because onboarding is pretty much instant now. And mm -hmm. why have it for it? Um, and then I mean, that's pretty much it. All the add-ons are extras. So if you wanted to add on uh, auto host, super hog, you have to pay for, for these add-ons um, and upsells. We take a 2% fee by paid by guests. So you sell something yeah. for a hundred dollars, the guest's going to pay 102. You're going to get a hundred dollars minus your strike fees. Yeah. So, How does it work then with the super hog and auto host? If they're already built in, if I decide to use, for example, super, uh, super hog, does that mm -hmm. mean I have to pay Superhog? I have to have an account with Superhog, but you're tapping into my account? So if you want an account with Superhog because you want to be able to control certain settings, same with Autohost, um, you can do that. Mm -hmm. At which point you pay Autohost or Superhog or any of the third-party services, mm -hmm. and we would just connect that account. Mm -hmm. If you're new to that system and you're not sure yet and you want to kind of test it out, our model, if you sign up using Enzo Connect within Enzo Connect, is a per-booking model. So it okay. ranges anywhere between a dollar per booking to $15 per booking if you go for full background checks and credit fraud checks and things like right. that. Um, and you would pay one invoice for Enzo Connects. Okay, so okay. So that would be like, you know, each month you'll charge me for the Enzo Connect thingy and anything else on top of that. Okay. Correct, correct. Easy. Yeah. Okay. So is there <laughs> a contract that's required to be signed? Do you, is it just month to month or, you know? So, yeah, um, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Uh, we do prepayments to kind of lock in a discounted rate uh, mm -hmm. uh, for you. If you prepay the year ahead, you get a better rate on your per room yeah. or per listing. Same with quarterly. Um, and no, I mean, it's pay as you go. There is like cancellation fees, uh, sorry, cancellation periods that you have to let us know because we spend mm -hmm. so much time setting you up for yeah. success that we, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, we have negative churn. So I'm not too worried about it, but it's more when you have one, two properties and you're not yet, you don't know yet if this is the right fit for your business. You're not sure if you want to scale. Yeah. Um, that's where it's going to be a bit more risky for us. We don't want you to sign for, you know, $20 a month and, and right away mm. sign off and spend time with you just as much as we're going to spend time with someone who's 150 uh, mm. listings. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Look, Francois, we've come to the end of the usual questions. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else that we haven't touched on that we should know about If Then Connect? <laughs> um, <laughs> if so, Then When. Um, no, If When Then Connect. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm not talking about it. Stay tuned on our, our website, our newsletters and webinars and such on what's coming out next. We're constantly innovating and adding more functionalities and ease of use within the product. Mm -hmm. And we're going to stay a product and client focused company for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, if you solve these issues with products over sales and marketing, uh, you win. So if you guys have any, you know, the, the audience here has any ideas or things that you're really frustrated by, please do not hesitate to reach out and share it with me. I am buzzing with new ideas for this industry. Um, so I always appreciate it. <laughs> Great. Well, I will pop the de uh, pop the link for Enzo Connect yeah. in the description below. And if you have any questions for Francois or Enzo Connect, pop them in the comments below. Francois, thank you, thank you so much. It's been thank great you. catching up after one year and learning where Enzo Connect is at these days. Wow. 100%. 100%. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> really good. Thank you very much, Francois. Bye. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to catch up on ones you've missed, just head to thetechexplainedseries.com. Or if you're short for time, you can head to thetechminis.com where you'll find extra short interviews. See you next time.